So far, we know that a linear equation in two variables represents a line. So an inequality, you're going to have a region bounded by the line, either below the line, above the line. Sometimes you'll include the line. Sometimes you will not include the line. So a system of linear equations or inequalities in two variables is a set of two or more linear equations or inequalities, respectively. So what does it mean to have solutions to this system? It means similar to when we were working with solutions to linear equations, which would be all the points belonging to that line. For inequalities, it was a whole set of region or points that were the solution to the inequality. If you have a system of equations or inequalities, it still points in plane, but this time they have to satisfy all the equations and inequalities in that system. So let's just restrict our attention right now to two linear equations. We have different cases here, so take a look. For the first one, if you have two lines and they are parallel to each other, then they're never going to meet. So no point in plane will belong or satisfy both equations or belong to both lines. So therefore, you're going to have inconsistent system. What if both lines actually lie on top of each other? Then all the points that are on that line will be the solution. But then the third case would be that the two lines intersect each other, in which case only the point where the two lines intersect belong to both lines and satisfy the equations to both lines. So when the two lines are parallel, we call the system to be inconsistent. When the two lines overlap or basically are parallel and also have the same y-intercept, we say they are consistent dependent. When the two lines actually intersect uniquely in one point, you say the system is consistent independent. These two lines are independent of each other except for that one point where they meet. So when you have an inconsistent system, you will have no solutions and the two lines are parallel. When you have a consistent dependent system, you have infinitely many solutions and the two lines overlap. Infinitely many because all the points on that line are going to be solutions. Inconsistent parallel, consistent, dependent. It's parallel, but they also have the same y-intercept. In fact, all the points on one line belong to the other line. Consistent, independent, then you have a unique solution, and the solution is the point of intersection of the two lines. So once we take concrete examples, you will see how to identify whether the system is consistent, dependent, independent, or inconsistent. Let's take concrete examples so you can actually see. So the first method by which we solve system of equations is the graphing method. Graphing method means exactly that. Just graph the two lines and read off the solution from your um, graph paper here. So let's say we are working with this system. We have to graph these two lines. So that's good practice for you to review graphing lines. Remember, two points determine a line. So if you take each of the equations and make your table of points, and then you can graph it. So let's make a xy chart. Let's put a 0 in for x here. So 3 times 0 is 0. Negative 2 y equals 4. If you solve that for y, you'll get y equals negative 2. So 0, negative 2 is a point on this line right here, the first line. Let's put, take x equals 2. 3 times 2 is 6. 6 minus 2y equals 4. Go ahead, solve that for y, and verify that that gives you y equals 1. So 0, negative 2, and 2, 1 are points on this first line. So let's plus them. So here's 0, negative 2, and here's 2, 1. And that will be this first line here. All right, go ahead and plot x plus y equals 3 on your own. Make a chart and plot the line. It will give you a few moments. All right, assuming you have come back from pausing, here is 0, 3. So when x is 0, y is 3. When y is 0, x is 3. So those are your x and y intercepts for that line. So plot them. So we have 3, 0, 3, and 3, 0. 
plot the line. And now remember what we said. We were looking for a point in the plane that satisfies both equations. And you can see how this point 2, 1 satisfies both equations. 2 plus 1 is 3. So 3 times 2 is 6, and 6 minus 2 is 4, because 2 times 1 is 2. So this point 2, 1 belongs to this line as well as that line, and so that is your solution. So anytime you are looking for solution to the system of equations, you just graph them, read off the point. All right, so now pause the video here. See what you can do to plot the solutions of this system of inequalities, 3x minus 2y less than 4, and x plus y less than 3. So basically, start with graphing the lines, and then make the truth table and see what you got. Go ahead, try it on your own. Assuming you've come back, let's start with graphing the lines. So here we have x plus y less than 3. Uh, that x is 0, y is 3, y is 0, x is 3. You just need two points. On the first line, when you can plot some coordinates, like say when x is 2, 3 times 2 is 6, 4 minus 6 is negative 2 negative 2y equals negative 2, so y equals 1. So go ahead and plot a couple coordinates for each one and plot those coordinates. So here we have the pink line is the second line, x plus y less than 3. And the blue line is the first line, 3x minus 2y less than 4. All right, so Let's make a truth table. So let's pick a point that's not on both of the lines, say 0, 0. So if we do that, 0 smaller than 4 is correct. So remember, that's the blue line. So that means it's everything above the blue line. For the second line, it's going to be 0 is smaller than 3 is also correct. So everything under the pink line. So the blue line and the pink line 0, 0 is a solution. So here we have the first line, 0, 0. So everything above the blue line, and then everything below the pink line. So you overlap it, and you can see that the solution set is the intersection. Can you list a couple of the solutions here, then? We have like negative 2, 0, negative 4, 2, many, many solutions you can find just by looking at the shaded regions where they both intersect. So we have infinitely many solutions here. All right, the other method is substitution method to solve system of equations. And we're looking for other methods because, as you can see, if you were to graph equations of lines, you can't always read off the point. It depends on where the point of intersection happens to be. So if you don't have a finer scale, you might not be able to read off the point exactly. So to find exact solutions, we have to find some other methods. All right, so let's start a substitution method. So let's take a look at the system of equations here. And to do substitution, the first step is to solve one of the equations for one of the variables. So let's say we start with x plus y equals 3. That's an equation that we're starting with because it's easier to solve for y. So we have to undo the plus x. So subtract x from both sides, and we get y equals negative x plus 3. Since the y coordinate is given by this for the second line, and we're looking for a solution that satisfies both equations, which means that this y coordinate should also satisfy this first equation. So we're going to, in the second step, substitute this value of the variable in here. So the equation will look like how then? It will be 3x minus 2 times, and then this y value is going to be the negative x plus 3. So we're going to replace this y with negative x plus 3 that we got in the first step. And now you have an equation in one variable which you can solve, multiply across, and then solve. So we have 5x equals 10, or x equals 2. Once you find the x value, then step 3 would be to substitute the x value back here to get the y coordinate. 
So we'll have negative 2 plus 3 or 1. You can always go back and check and make sure that it works on both equations. And so our solution is 2, 1, like you saw in the graph before. So this is another way of solving a system of equations. All right, try this on your own. Pause the video here, please. All right, assuming you've come back, step one. So we'll use the first equation in this case. Solve the equation for y. So just add y and subtract 4. And then use that value of y in the second equation and substitute here. So 6x minus 2 times y. Solve the equation for x now, because you have an equation in x. And now look what happened. Oh, 8 equals 3. Is that a true statement? No, 8 cannot equal 3. So what does that mean? That means this equation has no solution, because it's a false statement. And so what that means is that this system of equations has no solutions or that it is an inconsistent system. If you were to actually solve the equations, you'll see that they are two parallel lines because the slope is the same. Both equations have slope 3, so they're parallel lines. Okay, the third method is using elimination method when it's not that easy to substitute. So let's say something like this. We can still do substitution method, it just will be a little more tedious. So here's what we do. We line up the equation so that the x's and the y's are lined up under each other. And then the second step is to multiply one or both equations by a constant so that when you add these two equations, you get a third equation in which one of the variables has added up and gone to 0. But what does that mean? It's very difficult to understand my words right now, but if you see it, you'll uh, understand. So I'm going to multiply this first equation by a 3 and the bottom equation by a 2. If you do that, look what happens. This first equation becomes 9x minus 6y equals 18. This becomes 10x plus 6y equals 4. Both these equations are equivalent to these equations, so the solutions are going to be not changing. But the advantage of this new system of equations is that if you add these two equations, we get a third equation where the negative 6y and positive 6y, which added up to 0y and gave us equation in one variable, which allows us to solve. So you can see x would equal uh, 22 over 19, right? Because you solve that for x which means that now we can plug that value of x either in first equation or the second equation and get y. So we do that, let's say put it in the second equation and 5 times 22 19 plus 3y equals 2, multiply 5 times 22 and now solve for y, so 2 minus 110 over 19, let's keep going and you get negative 72 over 19, Divide both sides by 3, which will give you negative 24 over 19. So your solution here is going to be 22 over 19 for x, negative 24 19 for y. You can also do substitution and verify for yourself. It will be the same solution. It will just be a little more tedious. This makes it a little bit easier to solve. So it depends on the context and what equations you have to decide what method you're going to use to solve the system of equations. So again, line up the x's and the y's, multiply one or both equations by a constant so that the new equations, when you add them, one of the variables is eliminated. And that's why the name, elimination method, you're eliminating one of the variables so that we can solve for the other variable, find the x value, then find the y value, and that gives you your solution. You can always go back and check. It's easy to make sure you got the right answer here by going back and checking that they satisfy the point you got satisfies both equations. All right, try this problem on your own. Let's do the first step together. We lined up the two equations. Now go ahead and solve. Assuming you've come back, so what should we multiply by? Let's multiply the top 
rho by negative 2. OK, so let's see what happens then. We got negative 2 times 3x, which is negative 6x. Negative 2 times 2y, which is negative 4y. Negative 2 times 6, which is negative 12. All right, add the two equations, and let's see what we got. We got 0 equals 0. All the variables got eliminated. And you have a true statement. When this is happening, you say this is an identity, which means this is true for all x and y. So that would mean that we have infinitely many solutions. What are the solutions? I basically, these two lines occupy the same space. And so that would mean that all points that are on this line are solutions to this system. That's why there are infinitely many solutions in such a system. We know we called it consistent dependent. To solve nonlinear systems of equations, you should do similar procedures. So for example, if you have x squared minus y squared equals 4, which you know is a hyperbola, and then x plus 3y equals 5 is this line. So you know you can get two points of intersection. So which method do you think would be appropriate here? Go ahead, pause the video here and see if you can do this on your own. Good, substitution is the right method to use here. And so if you use that substitution, we have x equals negative 3y plus 5 from the second equation here. So we'll substitute that value in the first equation for x. Please make sure you multiply negative 3y plus 5 times negative 3y plus 5, and then solve. Pause the video here and finish the problem. So you should have gotten, using quadratic formula, y equals uh, these two values, 15 plus square root 57 over 8, 15 minus square root 57 over 8. Substitute it back for y, which is negative 3 times y plus 5, and that will give you your solutions. And so our final answer would be that we have coordinates for x and y. Here's another x and y. And that is these two coordinates that you see right there. All right, you try this one on your own. We know that x squared plus 2y equals 4 is parabola. And then you have the line. So again, two points of intersection. Go ahead, see what you can do. You don't have to use substitution. You can do the elimination. In this particular case, elimination works, right? Do you see that? If I were to add these two equations, we end up with a quadratic in x factor or quadratic formula. And then use the x values to get your y coordinates. To get the y coordinate, plug it in either of the two equations. And then that will give you your solutions. So negative 2, 0, actually, you can see it even from the graph and 1 and 3 halves. So those are your solutions. So you can solve systems of nonlinear equations in similar fashion. You can use elimination or substitution, depending on which one is appropriate. If you have systems of inequalities, graph the two curves, and then do test points to check what the solutions are. So when you graph it, you can see Use your test points to figure out which solutions are going to satisfy the inequalities. So we have 0, 0. 0 is smaller than 4, so it's under the parabola. Dotted line for parabola. 0 is greater or equals negative 2, which is also a correct sin sentence. So the line and, and everything under the line and where the two overlap is inside the parabola and below the line. So that's the solution set right there. 